Hi, what's up out there in football land? It's your girl, Sonya Anderson. Welcome to another edition of All Things Football from a Lady's Perspective. Thank you so much for tuning in to this wonderful, wild Wednesday. Today is March the... Hmm, what's today's date? It is the 8th, 2018. Actually, correction, is March 7th. Sorry, guys, getting a little ahead of myself. Welcome to another edition, in any case, of All Things Football from a Lady's Perspective. Gents, you already know, share this with all the ladies in your life that you value, that love the game of the NFL as much as you do. Feel free to still tune in. And everyone, please subscribe and share this channel so that you can be in the know of all things football from a latest perspective. I'm Sonya Anderson, and thank you so much for joining me again. NFL news never stops, as I always told you all, and trust me, tonight's news will not disappoint. I've been supposedly uploading this video all week, but every time I get ready to upload it, something else happens, and guess what? I have to redo it. So, let's get started. First things first, we're gonna talk about some trades that went on, some retirements that went on, some shocking news for some, not so shocking for others. And then we're gonna wrap on up with the combine and a Panther fact from my squad that I like. Now, and then we have our faith moment, which will be focusing on a formal NFL player that I will ask you all to keep in your thoughts and prayers as he battles a traumatic brain injury. Again, let's get started. First things first, some trades coming up. The Rams are trading defensive end. Robert Quinn, the two-time Pro Bowler, they're trading him to the Dolphins. If you don't know, just trading him, getting some draft picks later on down the road, getting something out of the deal, I'm sure. And they're also trading Alec Ogletree to the New York Giants for two draft picks. So. They're doing a lot of maneuvering. The Rams have been super busy. The former NFC West champs are still switching out some people, trying to get the cream of the crop so that they can be even better next year. So whatever they got up their sleeve, I'm sure they got a lot cooking out there on the West Coast. Now, we've been talking about Kirk Cousins for quite a couple of weeks now, quite a few days. Kirk Cousins, still not signed. And he's actually not going to be a free agent until March 14th, so we got a few more days for that. But the Broncos are not the only ones looking for him. Apparently, the Jets are also interested in him. And I heard a couple other teams that are interested in him. So Kirk Cousins still has his options open as far as playing in the NFL. So we will break that news as soon as he's signed to that new team. So good luck, Kirk. I hope you get the best deal for your value. Now, one of my Panthers guys, I was totally blown away. So Jonathan Stewart, Jay Stu, 10 years with our league. He is no longer with our league. Panthers released him. I was heartbroken. Jonathan Stewart was an amazing player. And I think I've talked about him in my last episode. So you can go back and watch that. Going to definitely, definitely, definitely miss him, value him, everything. So he has yet to be picked up. But in addition, guess who else they released? Kirk Coleman. Okay, really, guys? You just named him team captain. It just proves to everyone in the NFL, you never know where your job's going to be or if you're going to have a job the next day. It's the NFL. Everything's always changing. I'm going to come up with an acronym for NFL as opposed to National Football League because I'm telling y'all, doing this show really helps me stay on top of everything, and it is seriously ever-changing. I could really upload a video every single day with different news. Amazing. 32 teams, always up in the air. <laughs> so, let me tell y'all about Mr. Coleman. He already got him a job. Guess where he went? You got it. Down there with Drew Brees. Down there with Ted Ginn, New Orleans, our division rivals. Ted Ginn already said he really didn't want to leave the Panthers, but they released him. So y'all know when he ran that playback against us, that was some like in your face type stuff. So get ready for Coleman to link up down there in the Big Easy. And I guess they'll show us who's boss when we go up against them, but made a better team win. 
Good luck to you, honestly. Kurt Coleman, you will be missed. He's my personal friend on Facebook. A phenomenal player. Just an amazing family person. Just an all-around great person. Gonna be missed. But good luck in New Orleans, except when we play y'all. <laughs> now, the Saints, on the other hand, will not be pursuing Jarvis Landry. Y'all know that the Dolphins been threatening about franchising him and getting rid of him. Miami's been smoking that for a minute about what they're going to do with him. So he has yet to be picked up, but the Bears apparently are also interested in him, and I think I heard the 49ers were as well, but no one's picked up Mr. Landry yet. So Jarvis, good luck because the free agency is coming up soon, and you want to go ahead and get picked up before the drafts so that you can ensure you're going to be playing next season. Now, the Bears and the Dolphins are also interested in Jordan Howard. So it's a lot of shakeups, a lot of moving, a lot of releasing players, signing players, pretty much a lot of stuff in the NFL, especially this time of year, the busiest time of year, as teams are um, franchising people and making sure that they have this salary cap opened up for the draftees and whoever else they're going to switch around with. Speaking of the salary cap, the NFL salary cap just went up from $166 million to $177.2 million for the 2018 season. So they are getting more funds from somewhere. So that should hopefully help some people stay in place. Now, a lot of people been franchised that we are totally shocked about. One being Le'Veon Bell. Second time, Pittsburgh Steelers have franchised him. So guess what Bell said? You know what? I'm not even going to play this year. You guys don't value me enough to keep me on the squad, keep me playing, pay me. I'm not even going to play. I'm not going out on the field. He might not even wear the uniform. Now, y'all know what happened to the last player that refused to play because he was franchised. Hmm. Tomlin just got him up out of there at the end of the season. So, Le'Veon, I hope things work out for you. Um, if not, I'm sure somebody will pick you up. You're a heck of a player. And I honestly don't know why you're being franchised again. Now, in a non-related incident, Antonio Brown restructured his contract agreement to take a little bit of less money, basically, over time and get more of a lump sum up front so that he could free up a little cap space but apparently it had nothing to do with Le'Veon Bell being franchised. It's just pretty much a, an agency thing within the Steelers organization. So he's good to go. Le'Veon, we'll stay tuned and see what goes on. Because if they want Le'Veon, somebody's going to pay big bucks for him. It's just that simple. Now, let's talk about some more trades. It's been a crazy day. Now, Michael Bennett. Seattle Seahawks, you guys know him from the very vocalized, very um, dramatic, so to speak, very, um, very visual protests he did against police brutality and the entire national anthem fiasco that was going on. And as you know, Seattle did not really like the take and the knee thing, but they did join arms. They locked arms. But I guess the damage was already done. So some of these NFL teams are like really against these protests that these players are doing. Now I'm going to tell y'all from my personal experience, all police officers are not bad. And I think that these people, no matter who they are, myself included, if you're going to protest something, at least preface it with like, this is not applying to all people. This is just applying to this one thing. It's just like, veterans took offense that you're not standing for the national anthem because they thought it was you disrespecting the flag which they have fought been wounded and died for so to say it's a separate incident you need to specify that and if you are using a platform and you're able to speak then you need to speak so that it's clear across the board and like I said some of this stuff incites more violence. It's not really like resolving anything. It's basically giving other people the okay to just target police officers. And the thing is, these officers that are being killed are the innocents. Never has it been an officer killed that's this bad officer that's been targeting minorities or targeting whoever. It's always these officers that are outstanding in their community. They're family men. 
and have had little or no complaints from civilians and throughout their career. So just that little tidbit of information, anytime you use a platform, and like I said, myself included, always preface it so that your audience will know where you're standing and not that it's a broad spectrum across the board because it's not applicable to everyone. Now, in saying that, Michael Bennett has been released. He is going to the Eagles. The Seattle Seahawks have released him. He does have an injury, true enough, but, you know, they kind of were waiting. You could just tell they were waiting on something else to pop off with him. And now this injury just helped him. He went to the Eagles for a fifth-round pick and wide receiver Marcus Johnson. And that's the end of that. On an unrelated incident that we never saw coming, apparently to Ian Rappenport put on Instagram today, my frat brother, Richard Sherman, telling Seattle players, Goodbye, he will not be on the roster next season. Now, we don't know if Sherman is retiring or if he's just done with Seattle, but we do know he had that injury in the game where he basically mouthed, tore my ACL, I'm done, and that was the last we saw of him. I'm going to tell you all, Seahawk fans, something. Y'all are in trouble with all these switching going left, right, everywhere because Russell Wilson cannot run, pass, defend, and score touchdowns by himself. And um, there's some more switching coming up. I'll get into that in my next episode because I haven't confirmed a lot of this information, but I always believe where there's smoke, there's fire. And every time I hear something up ahead of time, when I come back and do my next show, it's confirmed. I've never gotten bad information. So I'll wait to tell you all once I've confirmed it, but that's not going to be all in Seattle. I'll just put it like that. Y'all might not make the playoffs next quarter, next season, excuse me, if one more person leaves. Like, I don't even know if y'all going to make them now with Bennett and Sherman leaving. I'm just saying, good luck, Seattle. I think you guys' last playoff uh, participation was when the Panthers were there in 2016, that, that season. That's 2015, 2016. Yeah, that's right. Because you didn't go this year because you were eliminated when Atlanta won their game against huh, the Panthers. So you got eliminated. So, so sorry because I actually like Seattle. So we'll stay tuned for those additional shakeups. But the Seahawks do want to keep Earl Thomas and they are in talks of working out a long-term deal with him. They're saying at all costs, they really, really strongly want to keep him. So... Earl Thomas, I hope you get the deal that you want, and I hope things work out for you as well. Now, Jerry Jones. I told y'all about the beef between him and Roger Goodell last week and the week before. He did not appeal that lawsuit from Roger Goodell. Jerry Jones went ahead and paid $2 million today in efforts to compensate for the Ezekiel Elliott legal fund that they basically accrued all these costs and that domestic violence issue that Zeke had before his suspension and all that. $2 million. Jerry Jones down there running his infamous work release camp. And there you have it. Now, supposedly the Cowboys are America's team. Uh, don't even know how they got that, to be honest with you. But they haven't been to a Super Bowl since 1995. That was their last ring. I think they may have made one additional playoff run. But um, everybody's read up on their playbooks, so they've pretty much gotten up on the whole Prescott and Elliott duo now, so that nullified that. And pretty much everybody who's had problems with law enforcement in the NFL, Dallas has a home for you. No matter what team you are, Greg Hardy from the Panthers, you know, you name it, especially domestic violence, Jerry Jones got your back. Like, he is running it down there. So, I don't know. We'll see what goes on with Dallas. Speaking of Dallas, they did franchise, let's see, the guy's name is LaMarcus, no, excuse me, DeMarcus Lawrence. Franchised him today. So, they got something in the works that they're going to be getting taken care of for themselves, too. 
better themselves so maybe they can become America's team again. Now, last week I accidentally was talking to you guys about the Bengals and I mentioned that Andy McCarron was going to be franchised and a free agent or whatever. He was going to be a free agent as of March 14th. He won his arbitration. Excuse me. I was thinking so hard about Andy Dalton, their quarterback, orange hair and all, that I misspoke and it sh I should have mentioned AJ McCarron, not Andy McCarron. I played my video back, like just happened to be playing and I was like, oh God, I said that like twice. Like I kept saying Andy. Bengals fans, y'all know who he is. Those of you who don't, I apologize. And Mr. McCarron, if you listen to that show, I definitely apologize to you because the Bengals are my AFC squad. I love them. So I'm sorry, AJ, but good luck to you and I hope you get picked up soon. Now, in other cuts and trades, the Raiders did cut Aldon Smith. Um, he got suspended recently for a domestic violence run in with the law just recently. So guess what? Maybe Jerry Jones will give him a phone call and he'll be picked up. Don't be surprised. And remember I said this because I'm going to be on the lookout for him to be picked up by Dallas. Um, now, one incident I meant to tell you all about with the whole NFL protesting. The Houston Texans, they will not take any player who has been seen kneeling during the national anthem. They've been real outspoken about that. They won't be taking anyone on their squad um, that has been kneel, kneeling. If they caught you on video during trades and stuff, you're not going to be a Houston Texan. So good luck with that. Um, let's see. I think I already talked about that. Oh, yeah, some more trades. Now, Whew, we got a ton of trades. Let me talk about the retiree first. Antonio Cromartie announced on Instagram today that after 11 seasons in the NFL, he will no longer be playing in the NFL. He's going to retire. In fact, he didn't even play in the 2017 season. So congratulations on your 11 seasons, Mr. Cromartie, and good luck in your next event in life. We appreciate your time in the NFL. Now, the other trades I want to tell you all about. You know about Marcus Peters leaving the Chiefs, going to the Rams. You know about Charles Johnson leaving the Panthers. He still has not been picked up. I've already told you about Kurt Coleman. The Eagles did release Vinny Curry. He had a $9 million money that was supposed to be coming to him this season that I guess they'll still pay him, but they released him. The Bears have put the transition tag on Kyle Fuller. And um, this is the big news here. Rumors are that Jimmy Graham from Seattle may leave Seattle and go back to the Big Easy to be reunited with Drew Brees and the Saints squad, his family. So that just came out, not confirmed, but possibly. So we will be definitely looking to see if Jimmy Graham goes back to New Orleans. Now, he has not had that type of career that he had in Seattle that he had in New Orleans. One, you know, plague and injuries and things like that. But he put up some numbers down in Louisiana. He didn't do much in Seattle. So maybe he do need to go back home. Maybe they'll take him and Sean Payton link up one good time and, you know, we'll see where it goes. And then they got two of our players, so they might be, you know, doing something from our perspective. Now, so we'll, we'll stay tuned on that. Chris Baker signed a one-year deal with the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, wanted to let you know about that. Um, now, the Rams have traded defensive end Robert Quinn, two-time pro bowler, to the Dolphins. I told you all about that for those two drafts. And I feel like I have, like, something else for you guys. But I guess I really don't. I just went through it so fast. Um, I'll go ahead and get into the combine. Uh, yeah. I got a lot of combine news to tell you all about. It's been a big week at the combine. And if you don't know these names before, you know them now. Shaquem Griffin. Um, big, big, big 40-yard dash runner, as a matter of fact, against other NFL standouts like Julio Jones, OBJ, and Ezekiel Elliott. 
Shaquem had the number one 40 yard dash time, 4.38. Julio Jones had 4.39, OBJ had 4.43, and Ezekiel Elliott had 4.47. Now, another comparison, Baker Mayfield from the Combine was compared to Johnny Manziel by Colin Cowherd. I don't think that's a good thing because Colin, quote said, he lacks the it factor. So just weren't blown away by Baker Mayfield. And in fact, when I looked at a couple of pictures of Baker, it just, his facial expressions, everything, they are very similar to Johnny Manziel, who's playing in a European league somewhere out of the U.S. But wow, is all I can say. Now, <sighs> That combine news is huge. Um, Naheem Hines from North Carolina State did the 40 yard dash in 438. Saquon Berkeley, 440 from Penn State. Rashad Penny from San Diego State, 446. Kalen Balaj from Arizona State, 446 as well. And Darius Goose, Juice, Guise from Louisiana State. 449. I promise y'all I try to look up his name for respelling for pronunciation purposes and I could not. So I gave him three tries. Y'all can feel free to email me at carolinapantherets at gmail.com for any questions, comments on any of my shows, how to ask questions for the next show. Let me spell it out for you. It's Carolina P-A-N-T-H-E-R-E-T-T-E-S at gmail.com. In the subject line, just put ATF, all things football, it's gangster, right? Or all things football. And I will personally respond to you as well. This show is going to be going full circle soon. So I'm going to be looking for some ladies out there to do hair and makeup to, you know, hook me up. Because right now I'm doing everything myself. And I'm in Atlanta. So if you're out of state in Charlotte or wherever, sorry, ladies, y'all could do it when I come up there. But I'm in Atlanta. So I'm going to need to be able to get to you down here. All right. Lamar Jackson is telling everybody, listen, I'm only interested in being a quarterback, not a wide receiver. So don't try to even draft me as a wide receiver. I'm just doing quarterbacks. Now, the Louisville Cardinals standout has been known to be, quote, unquote, possibly suited for more than one role. He said, no, no, thank you. Anybody thinking that can just keep it moving. I'm only quarterbacking. So we will uh, stay tuned. He's very adamant about that. We'll stay tuned to see if he gets drafted as a quarterback or a wide receiver. I'm just saying. Now, NFL linebacker prospect Shaquin Griffin also wowed the combine by benching 225 pounds with a prosthetic hand, 20 reps like with a prosthetic hand. You did that, amazing. UCF football type, amazing. Now, um, some prospects that are out there from combine and trades and everything, you know Carolina's needing some wide receivers right now. So we are possibly interested in DJ Moore and another Christian, Christian Kirk. So we'll see just what goes on, but everybody's, pretty big and in the end with that combine Josh Allen may go as the number one pick so you know Shaquem did good Shaquem did good Naheem you know all these guys got big numbers but it might come down to just Josh Allen being the number one pick now the top five running backs were Saquon Barkley Ronald Jones Darius Goose Juice Geese <laughs> Sony Mitchell and Rashad Penny. Those are the top top five running backs. And of course, all the top agencies out here have their mock drafts in all the big news, Fox Sports, CBS, all the Bleacher Report sports affiliates have mock drafts in. You can email me what you think your mock draft is gonna be, or just comment below this video, you know, and I'll give you a shout out on my next show. I don't know which way to go with the mock draft. So I'm going to just follow you guys' lead and, um, 
you know, we'll actually announce the winner. Like, you'll get a little small shout out. Now, please feel free, again, to share this video because my hope and dream is I'm up there with Pam Oliver, you know, or Kristen, or somebody at least still doing the sports announcing because it's what I love to do. My minor's in communication, so I love this. And I love you guys for tuning in because you make this show what it is. Now, I guess I'll go ahead and let you all know Pizza Hut, this is your fitness tip, is now the official pizza of the NFL. Bye-bye, Peyton and Papa John's Pizza Hut. Congratulations. Not better pizza no more. So I guess they'll come up with like a little slogan. I love Pizza Hut pizza. I grew up on that. Like I remember when Papa John's first came out, they weren't everywhere um, in that age group. So I grew up with Pizza Hut. Like my small hometown back in North Carolina, all we had was Pizza Hut. So like even before we got McDonald's. So I'm excited about Pizza Hut. Congratulations, welcome to the NFL. I hope that this relationship forges for a long time and that both parties are happy and productive and that we as the fans love the pizza, love, 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 and get some good deals in the process. Now, let me tell you all about my faith moment real quick and then I'm going to wrap up with some Panther news. Now, we need prayers for a former Arizona Cardinal, Chris Beanie Wells, who has the Tim and Beanie Show in Ohio. Um, he was the 2009 first round pick, and he is a running back. Now, Beanie is suffering from a traumatic brain injury, and he's only 29 years old. He said he started out having memory lapses, headaches. He finally got a brain scan, and of course it revealed that he had some trauma on his brain, including some plaque, and it's from you know, some football injuries he had. And to be 29 and going through that is very, very excruciating. And in my mind, the first thing I thought, and this is a disclaimer here because this is my personal opinion. So I cannot be sued for my personal opinion, but my first thought was, could these signs be the early signs of CTE? And if so, what can the NFL come up with as far as a safety harness, like they've been trying to do research on preventing CTE and things like that. Because, you know, CTE is only diagnosed um, post-mortem, which is once the person passes away and an autopsy is performed on the brain. So my thing is if they can find the indicators early on while the person's still alive, as in the case of Beanie here, then perhaps effective treatments can come about that can stop the progression um, into CTE or stop CTE itself from forming altogether. So let's be in prayers for him. Um, he's very young. His career is obviously over with the NFL. He has the show in Ohio, but he had missed the show because of these headaches and this memory loss. He said there were times when he had difficulty finding words during conversations. And so let's just be in prayer for Chris Beanie Wells. We really are praying for you. I hope he sees this show. Um, you are an amazing player. We think the world of you. And just take time to focus on yourself and healing and just know that we are praying for you. I personally am praying for you. And thanks for sharing your story because there may be other players out there that are suffering through the same things that only you just revealed. So maybe they'll get checked out as well. Now, I always finish up with some Panther news. And I just did my faith moment because I want you all to pray for Chris. I wanted to tell you all that, yeah, this is going to be my last little news bit for right now. Graham Gano, Carolina Panthers, just etched another four years with my squad. Now, Graham was on the chopping block last year. As a matter of fact, the Panthers brought in a little backup player after his 2016 performance, which was at a career low for him. Harrison Burke to kick for Graham in the event they needed to replace him. But, huh? Graham came back. He said, no, sir. You will not be taking my job. I'm going to do even better. Graham has the highest 
kicker rating in the NFL, 96.7%, missing only one field goal during the regular season. Congratulations, Graham. You deserve it. And Graham is um, going to be signing that, going to get that contract, excuse me, for $17 million. He's going to be the second highest paid kicker in the league. He deserves it. And for his career, his career average is 81.7. So good job. He's 30 years old. This is his sixth season that we just had with the Panthers. He's going into his seventh season. And he's doing it big. So thanks, Graham. We love you. We're so glad you're our kicker. Thanks for not going anywhere else because people were looking. I mean, like, they smelled blood. Like, the Panthers are getting ready to get rid of Graham Cano. We got to get him because you all know sometimes that field goal can make or break game at last second. Don't believe me? Ask the Vikings when they missed the playoffs back in 2016 with that missed field goal. All right, that's my time for all things football from a lady's perspective. I think I covered everything. I'm reading back through my notes real quick while I'm wrapping up. Again, contact me at carolinapantherets at gmail.com. Follow us, official Carolina Pantherets, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Snapchat. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Mrs. S. Anderson 2011 and or you can just follow me S-O-N-J-A Anderson is my last name on pretty much everything just follow me thanks for tuning in thanks for being the person you are have a wonderful week I'll be back on here in a couple more days I'm sure with more news and I'll talk to you all soon God bless